Hi, how's it going folks? You're very welcome to today's lesson on primary economic activities farming. So brand new topic. Um, like when we say primary economic activities, what do we mean? Well, a primary economic activity is basically when you are getting something from the land, okay? And that can either be from farming, it can be from fishing or forestry, okay? Or peace, okay? Bogs and pieces we looked at, okay? So your three Fs plus peace, okay? Farming, fishing, and forestry, and peace, okay? And a farming is done, we're gonna look specifically at farming for the next week or so, okay? And farming is done in a specific system, okay? Um, and the system is in front of you there. You've got, number one, you've got inputs. You've, number two, you've got processes. And number three, you've got outputs, okay? And what do we mean by these things? Well, inputs are some things you put into the farm. So think if you're baking a cake, an input would be like the ingredients you put into a cake, okay? So on a farm, an input could be like money. You might invest money into your farm. Um, an input could be, for example, buying a tractor, buying machinery for your farm. An input could be um, animal feed. You, you put in animal feed in the hope that your animals will get bigger. Um, you put in things like, you know, fertilizer, pesticides to make your crops grow better. Okay. Um, number two here, processes. What's a process? A process, guys, is any activity or work done to the inputs. Okay. Basically, any job on the farm is a process. So, for example, milking cows is a process. For example, um, combine harvesting is a process. Um, you know, making silage is a process. Any job done on a farm is a process, okay? And finally is out an output. What do you get from a farm? You get output. So from a dairy farm, an output would be something like milk, okay? Uh, on a beef farm, your output would be beef. On a sheep farm, your output would be um, lamb and wool. Um, for example, on a tillage farm, your output could be wheat or barley, which then could get made into bread or pasta or whatever. Okay, good stuff. So, folks, we're now going to look at types of farms, okay? And a lot of these types of farms will be very familiar to us, particularly where we live in County Mead. County Mead is a great farming county, and it's got a lot of things that make it good for farming, okay? So, the first type of farming we have here is... Uh, pastoral farming and pastoral farming guys is really simple it just refers to rearing any animals on grass okay so those animals could be cattle as we can see here uh, sheep and um, goats for example and uh, that's where the word pat like you might have heard the word pasture land pasture land is like fields okay and that's where that comes from pastoral farming okay um, and examples of pastoral farms could be a beef farm a dairy farm um, a sheep farm, very, very straightforward, okay? Um, a second type of farming is a tillage or arable farming. And this is basically, guys, growing crops such as wheat, barley, uh, spuds, uh, vegetables, carrots, sugar beets, whatever, okay? And a t a t tillage farming is hugely popular in, in this part of the country, in particular when it comes to growing wheat and barley. And you let, you, this is a very common sight, guys, at, at certain types of the year. You see the combine harvesters out in force, okay? Um, particularly in County Mead, okay? So pastoral farming and, and, and tillage farming are probably the two most common types of farming in, in uh, Mead, okay? Third type of farming is mixed. And mixed farming is when you have a mixture of both pastoral, so you might have some cows or sheep, and tillage farming. So you might have, you might grow some crops, okay? So you might have some fields for grass, which you might keep cattle on. You might have other fields for crops, which you, um, you know, grow wheat or barley or whatever on, okay? Very, very straightforward. Uh, final type of farming on this slide uh, is horticulture or market gardening. And what that is, guys, is basically using greenhouses to grow fruits, vegetables, and flowers, okay? Uh, for example, you might have heard of the company Keelings before. They grow things like strawberries, and they would very much use greenhouses. Why Why greenhouses? Well, because greenhouses, guys, kind of, uh, they, they mimic the perfect conditions needed to grow a certain crop. So, for example, it gives you the right temperature, it gives you the right amount of light, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, market gardening is very popular, in particular up in North Dublin. Okay, um, the next four types of farming are probably a, a bit maybe unusual to us. Okay, the first one is subsistence farming. Okay, and subsistence farming is basically when a farmer grows food for his own consumption and his own family's consumption okay and subsistence farming would be in a poorer area so for example maybe in poor parts of africa there could be farmers there that they might just have one maybe a one acre patch of land and on that land they just grow crops to feed themselves and their families okay and if they have any small bits so small surpluses if they might have a small bit of crops left over they might sell those okay 
Um, there, there hasn't been subsistence farming in Ireland for like over 100 years, okay? For example, during the famine in the 1840s and 1850s, Ireland was full of subsistence farmers, so farmers that grew uh, spuds just for their own consumption, okay? Um, next type of farming here on this slide is a commercial farming, and that's basically, guys, producing food for sale on the market. And what that means is like, very often in a commercial farm, a commercial farm is owned by a big company. So, for example, um, a big, uh, you know, McDonald's, for example, might have a commercial farm. Okay, and on that farm, they might just simply grow, uh, sorry, they might have beef, they might have cattle. And the purpose of those cattle is just to produce beef that's going to be made, to, used to make McDonald's burgers. Okay, nothing else. So, that's an example of a commercial farm. Um, you know, another example of a commercial farm could be, uh, Nest Cafe. Nest Cafe might have a coffee farm, and all the coffee beans they grow go into making Nest Cafe coffee. Okay. Um, second last type of farming is intensive farming, and guys, intensive farming is every type of farming in Ireland is intensive farming. Okay. Intensive farming is basically like modern farming, using things like fancy farm machinery, uh, artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and machinery to get the most out of the land. Okay. Um. And it's usually done in areas uh, where the land is good and well drained and it's got the good temperate climate. Okay, For example, in County Mead, uh, intensive farming is, 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 is very common. It's just farming that's intense. Okay, So the idea behind this is by spending money on machinery and fertilizer and, and pesticides, you're making the farming as productive as possible. Okay, that's the idea behind intensive farming. It's a bit like, you know, going into school and using things like computers, a PowerPoint, your textbook, um, online resources. You know, it's to it's to benefit your, edu you know, make your educational experience as good and, and, and uh, I suppose as, um, as like productive as possible. Okay. Uh, final type of farming we're going to look at is called extensive farming. And extensive farming occurs in an area where soil is not very fertile. Okay. Um, and this is done in the north and northwest of Ireland, okay? So they farm extensively here, okay? So, for example, if I'm a farmer in the west of Ireland and my land is very boggy and infertile, I'm going to have to grow crops. If I have 40 acres of land, I'm going to have to grow crops um, on my entire land every year to make any money off it, okay? Whereas if I had good fertile land in the east of Ireland, if I had 40 acres in the east, I might grow crops on 30 acres and then leave the last 10 acres to recover um, to give that and give it a rest. Okay, so extensive farming is when um, you you basically your land is poor, so you have to use all your land, okay, to get as much as possible out of it. Okay. And next thing, guys, is just going to look at what physical factors affect farming. Well, uh, the first physical factor we're going to look at is soil. Okay. Naturally enough, if you have if you have boggy soil like we looked at in the last chapter, that's not going to be good for farming. Okay. What you need are well drained uh, clay soils. Okay. And those soils, well-drained clay soils, are very often found in the east of Ireland where we live. Okay, so rich, fertile, well-drained soils help to produce more crops. Heavy clay soils are less well-drained and more suited to dairy farming. So um, soil is very important, guys. The better your soil, the better crop you'll be able to produce. Okay, um, climate. How does climate affect farming? Well, in Ireland, we have the perfect climate for growing grass in, for example. In Ireland, we have a lot of rainfall, but we also have some sunny weather like we have it's like we have outside to this day. Okay. Um, and these are more suited to cattle rearing and more suited to growing crops. Okay. Um, so temperate climates like we have in Ireland, this word here, temperate climates are well suited to farming. Hence why Ireland is such a big country when it comes to agriculture. Okay. Because you've got Good, good climate and, and as well good soil okay now number three relief and aspect so guys what does relief mean relief refers to the lie of the land okay is the land flat is the land hilly is it's on slopes um and what you want for farming is flat land okay you don't want steep slopes because steep slopes are unsuitable for growing crops and for keeping animals okay like if you've got a steep hill that's going to be very difficult to drive a tractor on to drive a combine harvester on okay um aspect that could be a new one for some of us guys aspect refers to the direction your fields are facing okay so for example in ireland we are north of the equator okay and the equator is the hottest part on the earth so uh, in ireland you want your fields to be facing towards the south okay so in ireland south facing slopes and south facing fields are more suited to growing crops on because they're get they're facing the sun they get the most sunlight and as a result they'll grow crops better Okay, 
Um, our final factor here, guys, is altitude. And altitude is the very same as relief, okay? Basically, so, like, look at these mountains here. Imagine you had a farm here. It's good. Like, imagine trying to drive a combine harvester down that mountain. It'd be very, very difficult, okay? So, upland areas are unsuited to crop production. And upland areas will be more used for grazing, in particular, guys, grazing sheep, okay? So, again, a, a poor old cow wouldn't be great walking up that mountain. A lighter sheep who's more steady on their feet might be better. Okay, um, so there are just four ways that physical factors influence farming. Okay, uh, just a quick one here, guys. This is your work that's due for Monday. Um, for question four, okay, uh, if you decide with beef farm in County Mead um, or the west of Ireland, which location would you choose? Okay, so when you're doing this one, guys, think about things like the weather. The weather in County Mead, we get less rainfall than the west. Okay, we get the in, in County Mead, we get the perfect amount of rainfall for beef farming. They get too much of it in the west. That would mean the land is boggy in the west. Okay, in County Mead, we've got better brown soils. Uh, uh sorry, uh, boulder clay soils. Whereas in the west, they've got kind of boggy, peasy soils. They're not very good. Um, County Mead is a very flat land, very flat county. Whereas the west of Ireland's got lots of mountains. Okay, so. They're the kind of factors I want you to talk about when you're giving reasons for your answer, okay? Folks, thank you very much for watching.